Good evening. I Ray Epstein with your financial market wrap up for this Wednesday. We're at the 16th of February and we are at, uh, let's see, time 7.20 p.m. I had to memorize that. We don't have clocks in here. I could put them up, but I like to do it with my own brain. Um, it's an interesting time. Let's start with the energy markets. They're down sharply tonight because there are words coming out of the treaty deal, the nuclear treaty deal with Iran, that they're getting this close to doing a deal. It's, as we heard a week ago, it's now or never. You're at those points, we'll see. Does this mean that President Biden's gonna give in on all the sanctions? If he does, how does that play when he runs for re-election and how does it play for anybody else for the midterms? That becomes an issue that I haven't yet figured out. Do I trust the Iranian government personally? No, not the Iranian people. I, I, the people aren't the problem. The government is always the problem. The American people aren't the government. Our problems are the American government. I, I think people around the world, I pray to God they understand that, that at the heart of things, most people are pretty good. But I don't know what that means. I don't know why we're not throwing more and more of our own government actions to get us more self-sufficient, go back to where we were. Private industry is doing that, the government isn't. I just read a report about steel makers that uh, are making pipe. Uh, the US and Canada, the business is booming for them. So somebody's drilling here and where they're doing it is interesting as can be and we'll see those numbers come back. But for the time being, to get a headline, maybe the Biden administration's gonna do it, and then he can say he's defeating, he thinks he's defeating uh, inflation to a degree, because we all go to the gas pump and we see that that's what we're paying, and you know they're gonna try to take away the federal gas tax. How do we make up that money in, in everything? I haven't figured that one out either. On the energy markets, a little bit of a backing off tonight. Gold pretty stable the stock market sitting, and what's the big thing that did not happen today? Were we not told by the UK, the United States, and other uh, intelligence agencies that the likelihood of an invasion today was very, very big? Now, Estonia's coming out, and they're saying that their intelligence has got it that something big is about to happen as well. We keep hearing that NATO is saying that they're seeing more troops, 7,000 more today, show up on the Ukrainian border. And Russian TV and in other parts of the world, even though our propaganda doesn't play this very often, they're showing how they're moving their armaments away. I don't know what's real. You probably know a heck of a lot more than me. When I look at this chart, it is not friendly. You are underneath, on a closing basis, the 18-week average of closes. Therefore, the bulls don't have control. The bears are, at this point in time, in control. And when I put a weekly line chart of just closes, that's all it is, you can see how the market drifting itself down. Now, when we go to the daily chart, you have a higher high and you have a lower low. That is not a trend, not where I went to school and probably not where you went to school either. The battleground is pretty easy to see, actually. It's between the 100-day average, the 18, the 200, and the Bollinger Bands, which you haven't hit in a little bit. So the Bollinger Bands, which were hit regularly back here, we've walked away from that, and now we're in a broad swinging market, mostly around either side of the 18-day average. The hard thing to do is to make money. This is my belief when you're just sitting at that average. Once you leave it, the trends set in and things happen. But when you're just every day hitting it, you get frustrated, you do the wrong things, and it hurts traders. There's points where you trade, points where you put your hand in your pocket. You'll hear me say that all the time. I'll say it right now, right here. Where are you going with all that momentum? pointing down. I don't see anywhere or anything yet that's kicked in. Now, let me give you a what if. If the market takes out the lows of Wednesday, which were 44.2275, you open up the door quickly for a 43.13. I don't see anything on the chart that opens up for a trend trade to the upside. That's what I'm seeing there. The NASDAQ's the same pattern. 
take out the lows of Wednesday, you open up the door for the lower band. Even if you rally all the way up, you hit the 200-day average, you hit the upper Bollinger Band, but you have a pattern of a lower and low, higher high. In the Dow, same pattern. Take out the lows of today. Remember, we got Thursday's action I'm showing already. You open up that door, but the market that's been friendly is the Russell. So it's overbought. I get it. It hasn't quite hit the upper Bollinger Band, and I'm hoping it will. It hit it back here, so it doesn't have to, but it's nice to see it. And if it falls back, I'm expecting support, but I don't think you're going to get the new buyers in it because you're overbought. I think it's just drifting at this point, but if you're asking me which market could pop, I'm betting on that one. In the VIX, we're just sort of sitting right here. I think the VIX would have an extremely difficult time getting through the 100, the 200, and the lower Bollinger Band. So to get a big pop in the market that takes that out and you start cracking down, I don't see it. And if you go higher, that means lower stock market. Then we get to the 30-year uh, bonds. They're embedding. Now, what's embedding mean? And at the end of this, I'm going to show you the ad for the embedding. You want to get involved in that. It's when you get both numbers that they're going sideways under 20 in this reading called the slow stochastic. You can see the reading was there, there, not here on Monday. So let's reverse. Tuesday, Wednesday, and right now you're trying to do it on Thursday. If you end up there today, you get two opportunities. First, it means you're selling rallies in the market afterwards, looking for continuation down to the Bollinger Band, ideally. It also means if the red line on Friday, not today, on Friday, were to flip back and close over 21, you're suddenly looking for a rally back to the 18-day average, the way you did here when you lost it, and the markets go up to those numbers. I can show this to you over and over as the, these type of patterns keep coming in. Ten-year note, this is embedded, present tense, doesn't have to. So I think if you got a bit of a rally tonight, the shorts will show up. I think they'd bail if you had a reading over 21, and I think they're looking for 125.07, the lower band. In the dollar index, we're doing this, just woof. Which way? We find support at the 100-day average. We get up and we fail against the 18. So you're just doing this. And traders are getting themselves hurt in that. They're, they're really trying to catch something that just isn't there. And that, that's a common theme right now. It's the flip-flop. 40% of the dollar index is made up of the euro. So that's flipping the other way on you. Caught between the 18 of support and the resistance being the 100. Got it? That they're just flip-flops. Now the British pound has come alive again. It's overbought as can be. It's got an ugly chart pattern from this right here. When you had the outside day down, you take that out, outside day up, you take that out, you hit those moving averages. That's all you had to do. You hit the, the targets. Can you make it to the upper Bollinger Band will be the big question. In Bitcoin, no trend. Higher high, lower low, and suddenly overbought. Now, overbought either gets a break in the market, correct, or... Both the red and the blue numbers get over 80 and you embed and you start moving out to the upside. We'll see what it does. Differential between Brent and WTI, well, you can see the markets are just hanging here. I have been telling you since back here when you lost the embedded reading that I thought this market, even up here, was going to go back to the 18-day average and not hold on. That's pretty much what the markets, for all purposes, did with today's break. You don't have to exactly hit it, but that's kissing it. I think you'd agree. Same thing in the WTI. Same thing in the heating oil, which actually did hit the number. You lost the, the embedding here. So when you lose that, even if you come back up, it's a sucker play. It's trying to get you involved. Oh, I'm going to get it, but the market owes. You'll hear me say that in my subscriber video. It owes this unless you get up and over that high. Market comes up gets over it, that, that one did it, and then right back down to give you back the play. Very difficult. I tell traders to avoid those. You never buy into a Bollinger Band. That's what I teach, at least. I think it's a sucker. I want to be the other side of your trade every time you buy a Bollinger Band, but it's every time. 
And I think that you'll find that if you go and do the math of that, of course I'm being facetious as I'm saying it, but I think if you go back and you look at it, you'll catch these swings and all of a sudden those happen to you. You're buying it here quickly, it's the other way. You bought it here quickly, it's the other way. You want to be with the trend, not, not trying to push it through that, and that's a natural resistance point. So you put it all together, you're trying to come up with a game plan, and you know every morning we're waking up because of this situation, it's all over the board. We had the FOMC minutes today. Those minutes very neatly told us that uh, the Fed governors are ready, willing, and more than able to lift the interest rates. So far, retail sales today, right through the roof. These things all look good and they won't take the Fed off their path. The only question you're asking yourself, is it a quarter or a half a point in March? With that, take a look at this.